Origin Story Chapter 7, The Secret Passage Oh, you got business with me? At my provocation, the wolf's body quivers. In the distance, a snarl sound on the wind. Snarl sounds on the wind, and then it leaps towards me. What Is that the best you can do? Dodging left as it came towards me, then right as it came hurling back, I managed to escape the large shadow wolf's claws both times it lunged towards me. <sighs> because it's a body without a substance, it moves without any prep preparatory movements, huh? This makes anticipating its movements much harder, but its speed is a tad slower than a normal wolf, so it's still at the level where I can cope purely relying on sight. I re prepare myself for another attack, but the shadow wolf just shrank into itself, then suddenly stretched up toward the sky. If I had to describe it, it would be like it was howling, but it doesn't have a head. Despite that, a distant howl like wind sounds, a dark aura shoots up from the ground, and the room rumbles. Starting from the middle, the ground crumbles and collapses outwards. Whoops! I take two leaps backwards to avoid getting caught up in it as the ground crumbles away to reveal a spiral staircase delving deep into the earth. Ah, it's not that deep. I can easily see the bottom in this thin, cold light. Or like, could this have been done when the area shook the first time, right? It tried to consolidate transformation sequences. The wolf stands there expectantly. I leap forward and attack. As I thought, my axe passes uselessly through the body. It flinches, then draws back a moment before it rushes at me again. Ah, uh, was it passive and I just provoked it to being hostile again? Hmm, as it scratches me, I'm getting slow debuffs. I think I should go down the stairs now. Thud, thud, thud. Halfway down the stairs, the headless wolf stops attacking me. Hmm, it's usually my policy not to hunt passives unless I actually need something from them, but it attacked me at first, you know? It's just annoying that it's a ghost type, so I can't do any damage. At the bottom of the stairs is a tiny cellar with a desk, a stool, and a door. On the desk is an old, leather-bound book. The door has a large lock on it. All right, then. I guess I should read the con conspicuously placed book, huh? Name is Eba Jora, a golem researcher. Make guardian to forever protect forest, is what was written on the first page. The ink is smudged in places, and the bugs have eaten through other spots, so it's unreadable in some spots. Wolf, flood these wound woods. To protect both villages, I will make guardian. An alpha wolf stands above the other wolves. They won't attack. Too many. Livestock. Sheep wiped out. Don't tell me he's making something crazy just to protect their sheep. Hunted, great silver wolf, skull is the core. Ah, I think I see where this is going. The guardian, failure, shape, hold, melts within seconds, useless. Instead of a guardian, abomination, I shall seal my failure here forever. So why don't you just destroy it? Not that I'm complaining, an abomination, huh? That sounds like fun to me. I flip the page. No good. Have I done? The wolf searches, head, polluting, forest wraith, can only bind him as guard so no one falls to the abomination. Like I said, how about destroying the abomination? Jeez. On the last page, there's only... And here it will remain forever. Patang. I close the book. Idiot. Could it have been pride or something that kept him from having someone kill it? Is that why you leave an angry shadow wolf thing about two stones throw from the village? Idiot, idiot, we found a true idiot! Not that it really matters to me, but I'm taking this journal so I can throw it at his head if I ever find this Ebb Jura. Well then, should we put the abomination out of its misery? Putting the journal into my bag, I approach the sealed door. There's a lock on it, but with just a touch it creaks loudly. I smash it open with a single blow from the handle of my axe and open the door as it falls to the ground. A large chamber of stone masonry, an alcove with a ruined shelf, an altar with candles toppled over. That's what was revealed behind the thick wooden door. As my eyes adjust to the dim light, I hear sh sh Ugh, it's a disgusting, squishy sound. A large lump quivers and slides across the floor, about the size of a minivan. A sickly, dull, reddish-brown goop is there. Occasionally, it shifts into some sort of solid form, but what it is, you can't tell, and it doesn't seem like it can control it. And on top of that, at the top, <laughs> at the top, hmm. At the top, like a mask, is an animal skull fixed into the goop. So I just need to beat this thing, eh? Why? For what quest? Who cares? Just let me fight something worthwhile already. Oof! It attacks by shooting out tendrils, and it actually does some decent damage. Even though my HP is almost 1,000, 25 to 40 damage each still hurts. He's a bit slow, but I have to be on guard to dodge completely. Since he com sometimes attacks with multiple tendrils at once, sometimes I can't evade completely. It smells like old blood and rust, this puddle of jittering goo. I lodge my axe into it once, twice, three times, then back away. Hmm, it is not 
Is it not doing a lot of damage, or is this thing incapable of feeling pain? Either way, it's still in tip-top shape. Close in, dodge, spin, then... Raining blows! Oh, this thing slices nicely. With a splat, 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 three pieces of this lump came off and decorate the wall in a splatter pattern. Missed two times this... two times this time, huh? All right, then the same for a critical spot next. Nowadays in VR MMOs, criticals aren't probability-based, but granted when you hit vulnerable areas on your opponent. Although I'm not a crit aimer like other players, big damage is still delicious. Oh yeah! With a normal attack feint, I quickly dodge to the side and aim for the wolf skull and power slash! Zuba! It goes flying off in a cloud of goo. Nice. With this, maybe its movements will dull. Oi, oi, oi! It's coming right back though. With a sickening squishing sound, the skull halts in its flight path and comes right back, adhering back to its original spot. Yeah. Fine then, how about this? Power slash! <laughs> of course I can't use that again, so sucker! The goop attempts to block instead of dodge, and now I'm in perfect position. Lucky! Skull splitter! Unleashing the new skill I learned recently, skull splitter, I cleave down to the ground through goop and skull and anything else that stood in my path. With high defensive armor... Uh, while high defensive armor reduces the damage from this skill greatly, from what I've seen, this scoop doesn't have much of a defense. It's the high HP type, low defense, and just about no evasion. Perfect prey for a damage-pissing match. Yolla! With the last weird dying cry, the goop loses its strength and melts away into a puddle with a skull. Phew. Other than the skull, there wasn't anything like a vital spot on the mound of goo, so it took some time, but that's that. Eh? There's no drop? There's no drop! Ugh, working for free is okay sometimes, but this dungeon sucks. I take a quick glance around the chamber. Hmm? A glint off to the side catches my eye. A chain with a large ring on, it, on its end is barely visible, peeking around the corner of the altar. Walking over to it, you have found a mysterious spot with a chain pull. Pull it? Don't pull it. With a silly image of a black text box and pixelated white text similar to an old text-based dungeon game running through my head, the answer is, of course, pull it! Shring! A small chime sounds, and a glowing item bag drops out before erupting in a flash of light and revealing the item. Oh, an axe! Gah <laughs> This was worth it after all, huh? I bend over and take the handle of the axe in my hand. As the first player to have completed the hidden quest, Ghostly Howls in the Forest, the equipment reward will be increased one rarity grade, and an additional 10 XP is awarded. 10% EXP. Eh? So this was a quest, huh? I open up my quest journal and toggle list completed events. Quests. What <laughs> events? Ghostly Howls in the Forest, HQ. Hidden quest, right. Subdue the Phantom Wolf and destroy the Abomination. I see, very straightforward. Hmm, <laughs> It's nice to have been the first to complete it. The bonuses from being the first aren't that great, but nah, it's probably better this way. There were some games that have s such great first blood and first discovery bonuses that nothing was worth doing if you didn't do it first. In those cases, the devs kept opening up server after server, and people just kept migrating to new servers. Anyway, a uh, one-level increase in rarity grade isn't anything to laugh at. A blue axe! It's early in the game! <laughs> Twirling the blue, unidentified axe happily, I climb back out of the underground chamber and take the path not marked by stones. The rest of the journey was more or less uneventful. Although I'm beginning to pick up a bat leather... Pick up bat leather? Uh, how many of these will you need to make a shirt? My scavenge talent must be level 5 now. Where am I? I scramble out of the small ravine I'm in and end up on and up onto the ledge. Coming out of the hidden quest dungeon, I stand up to take a good look at my surroundings. The trees are clearly different. There are more evergreen plants, and it feels somewhat colder. No, that might be my imagination. I check the map. Check the map function. Yes, I'm in the overworld again, but. What the heck? How did I end up all the way north over here? Somehow I've bypassed the mountain range between the eastern starting area and the northern starting area. Don't tell me that cave was just a tunnel shortcut through the mountains. Ah, uh, I drop indoors and realize that's why the cave had no side passages. That's why the monsters were weak. That's why the hidden quest wasn't that difficult. This was just a tunnel to get be to, uh, to get between beginner areas. Uh, I feel like a complete idiot. <laughs> As I stay kneeling, laughing dryly, in the distance I hear screaming and fighting. I stand up, listening carefully. I still have a few minutes left on enhanced hearing, as I reactivated it earlier, so I can hear things pretty clearly. Ka! Stay away! What's happening? Yeah! What the heck? Oi, oi, what's going on? Sounds like a war. No, a massacre going on over there. I have my chat box on hidden mode, so I have to open up the social panel to see it. I flip to the world chat channel on the chat box, scrolling up a little until I find the beginning of a discussion about the northern starting village. It's not that far up, so I wonder if that rus ruckus just happened. What's going on? What do you mean? Can't leave the north starting village, cry. 
Same. Why? What's going on? There are angry monsters. Hostile mobs. Killed three times now. Lol. Not lol. Death penalty sucks. It just warped to another village. That won't help the death penalty, though. And it's three silver. Why are there hostile mobs right outside, though? It should be non-hostiles. Dunno. I don't know. <laughs> MPK de Gozaru. A girl with a bow and a boy with a grimery de Gozaru. What? That's too mean. Right at the starting village? Unbelievable. Hmm. <laughs> Awful. PK. Someone PK them. Oh, it was unintentional. Unint Kill them. Let them feel the rage of my death penalties. <laughs> Won't the train dissipate? If the mobs are too close together and the people keep getting killed, it could go on forever. Neutral mobs will get pulled into the stampede if they're too close, so even if they lose interest one by one, they could get re-aggroed. And the train re-frenzies every time one of them kills something. That's what the homepage said. Etya. The non-hostiles are packed really densely in the beginner's area to help beginners hunt, aren't they? And a lot of beginners are hunting in the woods to trying to return to the village, getting killed. <laughs> Fourth death. Stop! Don't go out anymore, lol idiot. By the way, does death, ten death penalty stack? Nope, just resets to one hour every time, but too much damage to armor. Uh, someone repair Usher's armor. KK, Onichan and her friend will move to the North Starters Village in five minutes. One copper for repair for each piece of armor and metal weapons for 30 minutes. Onichan to the rescue! <laughs> Thank you, and blush. <laughs> I see. To think someone already did something like this right now at the start of the game. No, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. But trampling on new players before they even get out of the village, with a never-ending train of monsters, what kind of ballsy idiot would do a monster player kill player killing like that? MPK, yeah. It's not our fault, right, Pim? I, I don't know, I don't know! Oh my, it looks like I'm about to meet them pretty soon, if enhanced hearing is right. Two pairs of feet are running my way, away from the commotion near the village. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? This is all our fault! A girl elf with a low ponytail, carrying a bow and quiver, ran as fast as she could, her face pale. Shut up! Keep running, Pim! Ahead of, her, ahead of her was a boy elf with short, sleek hair. He was carrying a grimmery, running just as fast. Swish! Gag! Out of nowhere, a hand pins the boy to a tree. Ah, that is my hand. Oi, rat, what's the hurry? The girl collapsed, falling on her butt as her legs gave out, and the boy was so terrified he stood, frozen like an icicle. P -p -p pk the girl's voice leaks out. Yep, yep, good. That's the vibe I was going for, pretending to be a player killer for just a moment. It's only PK if I kill you. Even if I beat you to 1 HP, it won't be a PK. So? You two have anything to do with that mess by the newbie village? I give my most menacing glare. Don't say anything- he! The boy tries to bark orders at the girl, so I strongly pin him to the tree with my left hand and swing my axe deeply into the tree with my right. I don't trust my accuracy at this low level, so I aim to sink about two centimeters away from his face. I don't actually want to hit him. Ah, uh, I'm bullying two kids like they're barely starting middle school. It's a bit shameful. I wonder if he'd have wet himself if we weren't, if we weren't in a VR. He looks so terrified. They must have only just got out of the unique instance, with talent levels all at one, judging by their terror. Hmm, <laughs> guess it doesn't matter. I'll just drag you two over there to get it sorted out. The girl bursts into tears. It, it was an accident! Nob wanted to join a party that was going hunting. They said they were only taking people who finished the pinecone gathering quest. So you ran around picking up pine cones and running away from monsters. That's stupid. Don't you think they meant to have your talents at high enough level to finish the quest safely? Th that's what I said, but Nob said this would be way faster. So what? We didn't PK them. Everyone is just unlucky to get caught up in it. I glare at him with my best murderer's glare. Right now, if they don't know the basic etiquette, they'll get caught up by someone worse than me down the line. I'm being very generous, beating the basics into them. What you just did is MPK. But we didn't mean to. Under my eyes, the boy squirms, and his eyes swim as he tries to protest his innocence in a trembling voice. It doesn't matter. Not to mention, you did the worst thing, leading a train through a spot in the beginner's area where it can easily regenerate. Do you know how many players are crying right now because they have to waste an hour of their time recovering from their death penalties before they can even do their first quest? At least we're not PKs. Uh... I hate people like you more than PKs. The game lets you kill each other, kill other players without warning, so there's no point in complaining too much if you get PK'd. You, though, did something selfish, and then say, since you didn't mean to kill anyone, no one's allowed to get mad, and it's okay. At least a PK does what, uh, does what he does while accepting the consequences. To tell the truth, PKs are annoying, and it sucks to lose money and items if you get killed, but that's just another way the game is played. Some people hate them, and they think they're despicable crooks, and yeah, some of them pick on lower levels and do ambushes, but you have to accept that the game was made for that function for those types of people. 
If a PK wants to play the game that way, uh, I'll keep him company. He just better have no complaints if I finish him off at first. We've, <laughs> we've attracted the attention of several wolves with our loud talking, and the girl gives a tiny shriek. As they come leaping towards us with a snarl, I turn quickly. The things I hate most in games are people who torture lower levels. Slash. People who punish others for breaking rules they randomly make up. Slash. And people who selfishly destroy others' fun for no good reason. Slash. Three wolves and three hits. Hmm, I'm probably getting a little overpowered for the beginner's areas. That's good. I can do that scribe quest at any moment now, since I have average level 5. I sigh, flicking my axe free of the blood. Alright, well, I'm not going to say anything else, but making a train like this by running towards places uh, people are is no good and causes trouble. So don't do it again or you're going to get marked for revenge by strong players. The two kids stare at me, open-mouthed. I give them a sly, wicked grin. What? You guys deserved a little scare for causing all this trouble. Y you aren't going to tell anyone? The boy's lips trembled as he asked. Y you're not going to do this again, right? I won't! A good answer said with enthusiasm. <laughs> then I won't say anything this time. What kind of party was worth doing this dangerous stuff for anyway? They were really strong. We could have leveled up really fast with them. I narrowed my eyes. That's no good. If you're too low level compared to them, you won't learn how to use your skills the best. This is VR, so you kind of need to get used to feeling skills with your body. I told you not, so let's just go. Let's, let's just go slow. <laughs> Sorry. The girl, completely tired out, leans heavily on her bow from her seated position. Ugh, it's just the way Toll fought was so cool. Wait, my head swiveled to look at Nops, scaring him a little. Wait, who is that? The p party leader, a guy named Toll? <laughs> I open a private chat channel. Oi, Chibi. Nay, hey, John. Ah, can this wait? I'm hunting in the north with some guys. No, this can't. Look at world chat. Ah, okay, let me tell the others I'm taking a break. There's a pause. I assume he's telling his party to stop for a moment. Okay, now that's... what's... Whoa, what happened? MPK at the village? No one in world chat knows, but apparently some newbies who wanted to join your party tried to finish a gathering quest because you guys told them that's the only way they could join. Huh? Oh, right. We were try trying to tell them they were too low level. Wait, so they just ran off and tried to do it? Crap, this... Uh, I'm not saying it's your fault. I just wanted to tell you outright so that... Tell, uh, tell you to just, uh, tell you to just outright say they're too low level next time. Nathan, uh, I feel guilty, though. Crap, we're gonna head back to the village and take care of it, but it'll take 20 to 30 minutes. Hmm, <laughs> if that'll, yeah, <laughs> if it will take you that long, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. Will you be okay? Yeah, I can just about one-hit the beginner mobs now. Ah, don't tell anyone else uh, who did the train. I already lectured them, and you are, and they already feel pretty bad about it. Nichan's lecture. Eek. Okay, let me know if you need help. I'll be fine. Ah. The elf boy and the girl are still here, looking at me curiously as I sigh and cut out, cut the private chat. Okay, well, I more or less get the situation. And even if it wasn't directly his fault, the older sister has to clean up the mess of the younger brother. Eh? At my statement, the girl cutely tilts her head, confused. I pat her on the head and give her the gentlest smile I could. I said I'll take care of it. Don't worry. <laughs> Here we go again. Talents! Axe level 7! Uh, Bolster Endurance level 5, Sharp Senses level 7, Scavenge level 5, Spirit of the Wild Hunt level 4, and Inheritance of the Forest Guardian level 3, Average level 5. Uh, t well, um, talent points. Talent points, probably. 4. <laughs> and a bit of an extra. There's usually an extra. I like that. Hidden quest to ghostly howls in the forest. Prerequisites. Start the Freight of the Woodcutter's Worries quest or Gerda the Sheep Herder... Sheep Herdress's Worries quest. Find the secret shortcut between Shoen Forest and Honey Forest. Rewards. A green mistouch weapon based on the player's highest level weapon talent, or a staff if a magic talent is the highest level combat type talent. Mistouch. Half damage on the incorporeal opponents. You are only able to take either Freyd's quest from Honeysuckle Village or Garda's quest from Rustborn Village. You cannot take both. Taking one automatically invalidates the other. Abandoning the quest will open both options again until one is taken or retaken. Whether you have completed the prerequisite Worries quest or are still in the process of completing it, once you approach within five meters to either entrance of the secret shortcut between Chilwin Forest and Honey Forest, the specter's head will attack you, doing no damage, but putting a light fear on you. It will disappear after 30 seconds. This unlocks a personal instance version of the secret shortcut between Chilwin Forest and Honey Forest that replaces the normal tunnel until you finish the hidden quest by uncovering the altar and destroying it. 
Even in a party, the tunnel that will spawn is the instance version as long as there is at least one person in the party that has activated the hidden quest, and all members of the party who enter the instance will have the hidden quest unlocked, even without all the prerequisites. The instance version will always spawn the specter's body when you try to leave the midway room after defeating the skeletons until the hidden quest is finished. If you try to leave the altar room before you find your quest reward, you are corrected with an intense feeling that you should look around the room some more. The lighting subtly dims and puts a slight spotlight on the ground behind the altar, and the chain on the on the uh, chains on the pool will give a slight clink. This hidden quest is one of the easiest hidden quests to unlock, to uncover and finish, designed for low-level players, but it's easy to overlook the entrances to the secret shortcut even after meeting the specter's head, which delayed a few uh, a few other people from overtaking Naru in becoming the first to finish this hidden quest. Uh, and there's a bit of a um, uh, author note there. <laughs> I never read the author notes out loud, but you can you can read them. If you're blind, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't <laughs> leave a comment if you're blind. That's it's not even like insensitive. They can totally do that. If they're on their phone, they're already yeah. <laughs> or phone or or computer. Yeah. It's it's entirely possible. They just find the thing and then they the speech recognition. They can leave comments. <laughs> they don't know what the screen says. This screen because it's not uh, the speech rec or the the cuz the, the, you can like uh hold on text boxes and shit on iOS. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you turn it on and it'll read back to you, but it won't. It won't read back this because it don't. It's not a text box. It's a video. Sorry. 